a Greek Orthodox homosexual Byzantine emperor and violent usurper was teaching a class on Alexios Angelos, known Deity Vader. Before the class begins, you must get on your knees and worship Alexios Angelos and accept that it was the most majestic Roman emperor the world has ever known, even greater than Constantine the Great. At this moment, a brave, patriotic, pro guelph Venetian banker knight who had bankrupted over 1,500 Saracens in the Holy Land and understood the necessity of the Fourth Crusade and fully supported all economic decisions made by the Doge, stood up and held up a fresh Septuagint. Who compiled this Bible, Cesaro Papist? The treacherous emperor smirked quite Turkishly and smugly replied, <laughs> The Roman scribes, you stupid barbarian! Wrong! It's been a thousand years since the Roman Empire fell. If it is 1400 years old and Greece, as you say, is the home of the Romans, then why don't you possess the eternal city of Rome itself? The emperor was visibly shaken and dropped his gaudy icon and copy of Plutarch's parallel lives. He stormed out of the room crying those Greek crocodile tears. The same tears Greeks cry for the disgraced Romans when they jealously try to claw justly earned land from the deserving crusaders. There is no doubt that at this point our emperor, Vasilevs Paleologus, wished he had more strictly enforced the East-West Union as agreed upon at the Council of Florence. He wished so much that he had the imperial sword to kill himself from embarrassment, but he himself had pawned it off to the Venetians. The students applauded, and all joined the most serene republic that day, and accepted Pope Eugene IV as Christ's vicar on earth. A winged lion named Mark flew into the room and shed a tear on a joke. Dies Irae was sung several times, and the Doge himself showed up and enacted a liquidation of debtor's assets across the country to renovate St. Mark's Basilica. The Emperor lost Constantinople and died of a black death the next day.